make is okay, because we have all that left cyclic in, so typically we might have that right skid come up first. But let's get it nice and stable, okay? Yeah. Then do our gauge scans. If it gets unstable, act like you're somebody standing over there pre flighting We don't want that tail. Stop doing a gauge scan. Fix it. Start your gauge scan again.
Helicopter 04 Whiskey, the Cessna on the roll is southbound. Additionally, there'll be a second Cessna behind that one, south or westbound. Taxi Alpha cleared for takeoff. Cross runway 2, went 2903. Cross runway 2, Alpha cleared for takeoff. Uh, we got traffic inside. Helicopter 2304 Whiskey. 6525, Nine Railsburg Tower. Yes. Helicopter departing Alpha westbound at about 700, runway 311 left at Alpha 8, cleared for takeoff. So these guys are talking about ground control, so we still have to watch out for them. He might start, he might start rolling and just go right through Alpha without really looking for us. Cessna 5318 Mike, Hills, Road Tower, to Port Midfield, left down, runway 3 on left. Report Midfield down, uh, report Midfield left down, runway 3 1 left, 5318 Mike. Cessna 266, traffic just departed, taxiway Alpha, the helicopter westbound out of below 700. Additional traffic about a mile and a half south of Forest Grove, 1,100 AK Cessna for the downwind. Yeah. 
five miles off the south there, falling uh, about two miles to the south down to the mid south down. Roger, looks like a big five miles off. Uh, 535 on Lima Hills for a tower runway 31 uh, left, set out fake, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 31 left, 535 will take off. 5 mic off, turn cross. 1 to 0. I just had a clear 5 mic off. Is the heading? No. Uh, I was 4 to the muck. No.
Roger that, uh, thank you very much. Have a nice day. You can still end with your call sign, too. Um, you have a pretty distinguished voice. <laughs> you know, they're going to know who you are. Oh, okay. You have an accent, but, um, you know, a lot of us Americans kind of might sound similar. Okay. Oh. Some of these guys are a big pain in the ass about it, too. Like, they'll, make you say, they'll make you say Robinson R-22 uh. helicopter. Two, three, three, four whiskey. And it's like, oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I haven't had that yet. Everyone was pretty nice. I had a guy, we uh, opened up a flight plan after we took off. And they said we took off one five minutes ago. Fifteen minutes ago, one five minutes ago. And, uh... <laughs> what, one or five? Yeah, the guy, and the guy was like... He was like, uh, he was like, so what time is that? And then we just gave him a local time. Oh. And then he was like, what's the Zulu time, sir? Uh, <laughs> like, really big pain about it. Like, we took off 15 minutes ago, man. Uh. But he was also the guy that made us say Robinson, our 22 <laughs> helicopter. Okay. West Paris Air Traffic, up to 2304 Whiskey, just north of Fenway Lake at 2100, heading uh, southwest. West Paris Air Traffic. Practice area 48286, 3000 feet over Hag Lake. Turn Says it. What? It actually says Henry Haglick. Oh. Zero for whiskey at 2200, three west of Henry Hagleck, climbing to 2500 West Perkins Air Traffic.
Uh, I'm gonna climb higher. Yeah, so good. <coughs> oh, I was. Uh, Northwest 3. Oh, what was it? Uh. Cherry Grove, let's take Cherry Grove. 5. West Trace Air Traffic Copter 2304 Whiskey 5 West of Cherry Grove at 2500 climbing to 3000 heading uh, west West Trace Air Traffic Did you study the acronyms for off airports? Yeah, I mean I know it. I could just say it, but... Yeah, you can just practice after. it. Like, you see that big ridge top out there at 12 o'clock? Yeah. If we were going to land there, can you talk me through it? That mountain peak? Yep. Hey, um... There's that little reservoir, too. Yeah. There's thousands. Um... I know it's far away, so it's kind of simulated to talk through. But. Yeah, okay. Yeah, power we would have uh, 22.3. Uh, obstacles there, sort of trees. Wind's probably coming from the northeast, maybe east. Uh, looks like just dirt. I'm not sure if there's a road. And an obstacle is that for the high recon is just literally, can we land there and are there power lines people property? All right, that's how simple the high recon okay. obstacle yeah. is. Uh, the low recon, you actually like really dive into talking about the spot specifically. But the high recon, can we land there, should we? Do we have the power? Where's the wind? Okay, yeah. So you said, what was the power? 22.3. Uh, 22.3, so altitude's gonna be 3,000 feet? Yeah. And how More. cold was it supposed to be up here? Uh, 3,000, it's supposed to be minus negative three. three. Yeah. How hot is negative. it? Oh, a bit more. Seven, so it's a little bit Seven. different, so we'd want to get a different, more accurate power center. Uh, 20... Twenty-three, six. Yeah, so quite you get quite a bit more power. Right, yeah. without damaging the helicopter here. Twenty-three six and twenty-two six. Twenty-three six is the number we're really thinking about. Getting hotter as we climb up, even just a hundred feet. It's ten uh -huh. degrees now. <laughs> pretty, pretty crazy. nice thing about the high recon, there's not much that goes into it. It's really simple. Power, we got 23.6 because it's 7 to 10 degrees up here, 3,000 feet. Cool. There's our five minute. So we know our max is 22.6. You want to know that. Um, uh, wind's coming from behind us. We know that before we even get to the spot because we should always know where the wind's coming from, not just when we're doing a recon for an off airport. We should always know where the wind is. Uh, a lot of tools to our disposal for the wind. We've got the indicated versus our ground speed. We have a GPS here. Yes, there. Pretty easy to discern. And all the other wind indicators that we could have been looking at before we actually got out to. Now, here, where there's not as many. Um, and obstacles, power lines, we hold property. I throw the three piece in that. Oh. And it's just, is it big enough to land there? And I just make my go or no go decision. If it's no go, I'll go somewhere else. And then I do my power obstacles when somewhere else. When it's obvious around. that you can land there, yeah. Yeah. Or when you're that far away, you can still get your power. Because when you're about level, when it looks level with the spot, that's about the altitude. That's not that, right. Uh, you can still know the wind, because you should always know that. And then you're just obstacles. Can I land there? And is there, if I'm going to, are there power lines people property? Then you descend to a low recon altitude and air and do a low feed check. So, uh, let's not fly over there yet, but let's say we're going to land on somewhere on that road. Okay, yeah. you just imagine a spot down there and talk me through the low recon. Uh, there's a road, looks paved. 
Uh, we have trees. Uh, we have wind from the east, so we will uh, approach from the west. And we can take off over the road to the east to get out of there again. Uh, north landing areas to the to the west of it. Enter the north. And we uh not sure about turbulence. Due to the trees. <coughs> yeah, it, 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 it'd still much. flow over it though. It'd still flow over the trees. The turbulence, the easiest way to talk through it is if we we're gonna land on that peak there, we'd come in from the west to the east, right? Yeah. So we know that the wind's gonna hit that peak and then go up and then down, yeah. right? As it goes up, it gets more dense and then it's gonna fall. But here it wasn't so so steep, so I thought maybe. No, but you'd, you could still get some. And either way, you could always just talk about it. We might expect, you know, okay. this yeah. amount of wind's coming from, from the east, we expect some downdraft coming in, some updraft going on. Over there, we can hit that one up on the way back. Oh yeah. No. Oh. Uh, if you see a spot though, then you want to try it out. Come right in. Yeah, sure. Okay. Might be two five. So even down there, there those down there are force landing areas, right? Yeah. That stuff down there, that stuff way over there is force landing areas. Uh, yeah. That's a, another benefit of that high recon starting on a big orbit and then working your way in. You can still be, you know, building up the information for where you want to go for a high recon. Looks like there's a truck down there. They might be hunting. So we might not want to okay. go at this spot. Is this one here? Yeah, they might be hunting down there, and you know, a helicopter is going to really put a damper on their hunt. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> There's another, I see a white car up there on that road, just behind the trees. It's coming out almost right now, but you'll see it in a minute. There it is. White truck. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so a couple cars up here, let's just go through. I thought, huh? Do you think they mistake us for a bird or what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, of course. Pretty I went loud. to the safety course. Uh, when I went to the safety course, they, they fly over Compton, which is like a pretty bad area in LA, or near LA. And uh, they said one time oh. they got they brought the helicopter back. They didn't feel anything or hear anything, but they did a post flight. There was a <laughs> bullet hole through the main rotor blade. Dang. <laughs> Someone told you it's funny. <laughs> yeah. There. It doesn't take long to get to Tillamook. Yeah. If you do have a little bit of a tailwind. And if you were going, you know, 80 knots, we'd have 90 knot ground speed. Ah. West Perry's air traffic officer 2304 Whiskey 10 to the east of Tillamook at 2500 climbing to 3000 heading uh, southwest. West Perry's air traffic. And then we listen to our oh, last call. Uh, a little rainbow. Oh, nice. Good, I'm climbing. Oh, I'm... West Ferris Air Traffic up to 2304 Whiskey 9 to the east of uh, Tillamook. At 2,500 climbing to 3,000 heading southwest, last call. Forward cast, temperature, feet, Celsius, 2.5, altimeter, 2, 9, 9, 9. Ah, oh. 2. What? 2, two 9, nine, 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 nine. nine. Tillamook Airport. Automated weather observation. 1, 2, 3, 4, Zulu, weather, wind, 1, 0, 0, at 4.
you had some type of issue right here, where would you go? Uh, zone there. Cool. Green, green, uh, camping. Good. Something. So, I'd always try to, when I was taught to drive, my dad would always say, you know, drive thinking everyone else is drunk. <laughs> so, basically, drive defensively, right? Yeah. Um, I don't do it as much as you want me to. I definitely drive a little aggressively, but uh, I think it, it, it kind of goes into like helicopter flying too. Like we're flying straight to a ridge right now, and if that was your out, you'd have to do a pretty decent turn to get there. Where we don't want to fly straight to a ridge anyways, right? So you could just have this turn in just a little bit more this direction. Then we don't fly straight to a ridge, and you set yourself up to go to that emergency landing spot. All right. It doesn't put us off course that much, right? Now we're over, almost over the ridge where we can pick something different out over here if we want to. Then you can go back on course, but we just turned, you know, five degrees off course for ten seconds, but it made it safer. Mm. You want to hit any of these pinnacles up? Looks like there's a little helicopter pad right there is what that looks like. Yeah. Well, let's, let's try it. Ground speed 62. Okay. 100 zero, zero. Um. Oh, thousand. 2500 maybe. So power would be. Uh, 23. Oh. Doing some logging down there, but... Logging everywhere over here, so I don't see any logging cables. 80 knots. Oh, so southeast. East. Maybe. Yeah, we can just go up to 100. No. So we're coming in from the west. Uh, we can take off to the east, northeast, maybe. Um, any other looks good. We can definitely fit there. 55. Um, yeah, wind got to win. Landing areas to yeah, the no, left power down there. Property, right? oh, wasn't I talking about power lines? No, uh, um, no, no I, I don't think so. Think so. Uh, but yeah, no oh, power shit, lines. There's a truck down there. God damn it! There's trucks everywhere on the road where the trees start. I think I see it. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely on one, the, so on we can't, ditch? can't go there. Yeah. Yeah, if that right was our spot down. right there, just down the road. Yeah. Uh, shoot. Guess we'll just go a little bit further down, see if we can find some over there, or just go to that ridge line up, the, up ahead. That looked like a cool spot right there, too. Yeah. Both of these actually look pretty nice. Yeah, we're going 42 now, 40 knots. So a lot of times we might not have a GPS in our helicopter, right? I'd say most helicopters you fly in a real commercial environment, they're going to have really nice GPS. Yeah, well. but with this difference you can feel it, you can see it. Yeah. It's pretty slow. It's sometimes difficult to see when you're really high up. We're really high up for MSL, but our AG altitude's not that high, so it's easier for us to discern. You can, oh. you know, kind of know what to expect, but... I'm trying to, to land on this very small gate there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like it. Not sure if we can do it, but... Looks good. Well, we already did. Let's do this more like a commercial. Yeah. So start descending. Do the low recon as you're coming in. But we know where the wind's coming from. Yeah, so we are already on so, our entry. Yeah, we're on our entry, but we want to call out power lines for sure, right? This is below a hill, yeah. so very good possibility of that. 
No people so far. Definitely no property. Uh, definitely uh, turbulences. Downdraft when we're coming in. Yeah, and if that was the case, we'd want to make this slightly on the steeper end, right? Yeah. Now, if it's going to be steep, don't be high and fast, so slow down. Looks already like a walking. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, but as you get closer and closer, it's going to look faster and faster, so you should have this continuous slow down. Because we're already getting steeper and steeper, right? Oh. And eventually, it'd get, it would get too steep. And then you wouldn't be able to pump the brakes. Uh, force landing area to my right and to our left. Still don't see any power lines field property. Landing area looks nice and clear. Just a little bit of dirt sticks on the left and right. Nice pinnacle. We're doing a steeper approach for the turbulence that we might expect a downdraft here, updraft on the way out. Talk about force landing areas. Talk about your entry. Talk about your wind. Obstacles. Landing area. Meh. Cool. See how it's already getting a little bit too much now? But you're still going, you're not slowing down enough, is your problem. You should, have, should be going like 30 or 25. Uh, yeah. The faster your rate of closure, the faster you're going to get to the spot. If you're already high, man, it's going to make it really difficult to make that spot. So try to be a little bit slower coming in. You always get a touch of airspeed back if you want it. But by being a little bit slower, you get your descent rate very under control. Yeah. You're crabbing on purpose here? Yeah. Okay. Our trajectory is kind of over that way, so let's try to push that, apply that disc still to your spot. I don't think we're too high. Then go for the far end of it. No. Especially if you think you have a down drive. Down. Go ahead and slip it back. Your line of travel. Very slow with the right pedal because you're probably gonna have to raise collect it here. Yeah. That's why they actually have you slip around like 50 feet AGL where you bring the nose back. Because as you get below 50 feet, you're definitely slowing down more and yeah. more and having to increase your torque. I you think we can set it down here? Uh, no, let's just no, keep this no. keep going. You don't really have to work on that this much. More left. We. Oh, let's go to the right. Glasses on, it's really not that. Not that bright. But it was when we were approaching. Yeah, it was, yeah. machinery up there. Those could be, those, they're actually going to have the cables to drag yeah. up the logs. But, uh, go down that way. All right there, if you want. <laughs> That's good as well. That's how you're looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a bit small and better exit. Maybe. Two and a half. Seven degrees. Twenty-two point six. 
down there, it'd be cool. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to take zero four whiskey there though. If we had two three pop, uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, I mean, trees all around. Um, was it one? Ah, yeah. We will enter from here. Exit to the east. Wind's probably still coming from that direction. People probably power lines. No big obstacles. Ground looks good. Was landing areas all around. Oh, more to the left. Cool. Oh. And you're gonna land just right in there. Yeah. Cool. So we can do a whole nother loop. Or actually, I don't care if you want to just kind of loop out this way okay, and yeah. set yourself up with the approach. Because you're done with your recon, right? Yeah. Not like you're going to not be able to see that when you turn back around. But you can get your altitude and airspeed under control. The sooner you do that, the sooner you can turn back in final. Right? So if we're going to keep going really fast like this, you can't turn in. Okay, slow down. Because if we were going... 40 knots right now, you could just turn in final right here. Yeah. Right? But you're still going 65. It feels like we're going fast. Let's start slowing down. Instead of just descending so much, slow down. Especially if you don't know where the spot is, because you, if you've decided to fuck that. Person, I'd bring in a bunch of collective here, because I don't want to descend anymore. Because we're going to that top spot, right? Yeah. Yeah, if you don't, if you're gonna do that where you can't see it, you, you seem to put more emphasis on descending, but you can't see the spot. So uh. if you think you might be high and you need to get descended, why don't you get in this practice of slowing down first? Yeah, at first I thought, okay, I'm, I'm speeding up, so we're getting this turn done faster. Now we can land sooner, but... But the faster you go, the higher you are, the further out you have to be to intercept the angle. Right. Uh. We can see if we line up the spot to our helicopter. I'm not totally sure exactly what spot you're going for, but it's about at the top of the, maybe in here for me. It's probably a little bit different for you. That's where the angle is. But because you have this nice slow rate of closure, our angle is starting to go down our windscreen, right? As we get closer and closer without descending much. Yeah. We just want a rate of closure that allows us to hit that angle right at the top of the trim string and then follow that in. Without doing any big drastic inputs, that's what we want. So it's almost at the top of the trim strings right now. So keep developing that nice, good, slow rate of closure to allow you to maintain that. Good, our altitude's under control, our airspeed's under control. We still have ETL, or we're above 18 inches if you want to practice lowering a little bit of car beat. It looks really safe. We're above the demarcation line up here. Make sure you shoot for the far end of the, the spot you're going for. I actually like that little spot right there more. Oh, okay. I don't know what you're going, quite where you're yeah, going for. You're just right. going straight into the red, which works yeah. too. Okay, that works. That descent coming in kind of stopped. And you can feel it kinesthetically too. Yeah, I hear that, that we're coming to that was uh, too short. Oh, okay. So I sped up, but no, like now. <laughs> Good, trim strings being pushed a little bit to the left. Nice. 
And if you were going to sit down there for like a passenger who wanted to get dropped off, I highly recommend um, giving the passenger downhill to walk down. Yeah. Right, so they don't have to walk up into a main motorboat. Yeah. We'll be quite nasty. Or if they were going to walk down the hill because you told them to, they, they don't have to walk towards the tail rotor. So just right. you know, be thinking about that when you. They can go straight on. Yep. Oh. Straight out or at a 45 degree out, that's fine. You want to do another off airport first? Oh, uh, no. On the way back, maybe. Okay. Yeah, there's so many people out here. Mm. Where are they, Ryan? Thursday. <laughs> uh, yeah. Zero four 
Whiskey, turning base to final for runway 13, practicing rapid descent for um, 1,800. Alright, see the spot? Yep. And you can enter whenever you're ready. Okay, enter on the rotation in 3, 2, 1. Let's get those at the bottom of the green. No reason to have them up there. Do a little bit of turns if you want. No. Throwing a bunch of left pedal if you want. Turning uh, right crosswinds for one three. There's a school there though, so let's not fly over that school. No. Looks like they're at recess. Maybe we'll get a little more altitude next time. We'll return to just so we don't distract those kids from their learning. They're not learning right now. <laughs> they're having a break. Right, crosswind for final 413. 
Right base to final for one three. Tell me. What? You said crosswind. Damn it. Okay. Crosswind to final. That's interesting. Any aft you give here is going to cause an increase in induced flow and we're going to start sinking, so make sure you're raising. And giving forward here, because as you raise, you want that mist to come up. And we're already coming up slightly on the short end. Just barely. Like, this is looking real nice. But commercial standards plus or minus two feet from the spot. Oh, yeah. So keep adjusting to perfect it. Okay. on the go for runway 13. I'll do a running landing. Uh huh. So let's get that 500 feet as fast as possible. Gives you way more outs too. As soon as we cross this. Uh, the runway uh, threshold. If we had 500 feet, we could just turn around if we had some type of engine failure. But if you only have a few hundred feet, you're kind of stuck right. going to the grass, yeah. right? Plus for noise abatement and all those other reasons. Good to uh, get that climb in as early as you can. Uh, yeah, man, that Governor Off felt really good. Very smooth and controlled. Most people come up way short or long when they're doing a Governor Off because they're so focused on that. You had some good distractions there with all those seagulls, too. Yeah. <laughs> So, kind of increased your workload quite a bit. Uh, the only thing I'd pretty much say to do next time is um, keep reevaluating to see if you're going to hit okay, the spot perfectly yeah. and keep making those minor adjustments as needed and um, adjust car peep. Okay. Yeah, I think they're they're at school. So I, I know they're at recess, but it looks like some are at recess, some aren't. So we'll try to stay away from them. I know people have gotten in trouble from flying over school. Traffic up to 230 for whiskey on right down 1413. Why do we do running landings? Uh, in a real life situation. For increased power, or when we have less power available, we'll be able to land. Or when we are having a, I oh don't know, that would be out of rotation. A rotor failure. Uh, tail rotor failure would be, yeah, it'd be an auto with a full down, uh, and you just have the throttle and detent. Uh, so that'd be, a, yeah, that'd be a full down auto. Uh, clutch light coming on. Staying yeah. on or flickering for 10 seconds, or just flickers. Reduce power. Reduce power and land. So it's practical, but if there's indications of a dry system failure. I guess actually, I said that wrong. Uh, you should uh, pull circuit breaker and land as soon as practical, but there's, if there's indications of a dry system failure, reduce power and land immediately. Right? So reduce power. Hovering requires less amount of power. If you can't hover, you have to do a running landing. Oh, so when there's just a clutch light on and no indication of uh, drive system failure, yeah. we land normally without yeah, reduce yeah, power? Yeah, it doesn't say the. It says pull clutch circuit breaker. I would try to. I probably would too. Yeah. 
Alright, let's get a decent in though, because we want this to be a shallow approach, right? Oh yeah, running that. And we don't need to be going that fast, so if you already think you're high for that spot, don't be fast. Alright, that's a big thing I'm going to say probably a million more times, but I want you thinking it more, okay? We see a couple white lights there, and we know we're high. This should look like, to me, it should look like it's at the top of the compass. For you, it'd be... I always forget if it should be higher or lower. Lower. Yeah. I feel like it should actually be higher. No, when, when, put your head down and look where it is, or where it's going. Going down. Yeah. All right. Dead. So keep evaluating if you're going to hit the spot, and then we just know that we need to exchange ETL for in-ground effect, so we just want to keep ETL until we get closer to the ground. And then are we going to hit that spot? Pretty close, right? But you could always just get down here and then just hold a little extra airspeed until you get a little bit lower. You can adjust that car peak because we still have ETL. There you go. And when you know you're going to hit the spot, just give that touch of half cyclic pressure, just enough to bring that nose up about one degree. At the very end here, we need to give a lot of forward cyclic to level up the skids. Vibrations, we're going to start sinking, slowly, smoothly raise, forward. Oh, oh. too much raise. Go from there, go okay. from here. Just too much raise, so that wasn't slow and smooth, it was a little fast. Slowly, smoothly raise as needed, I yeah. guess I could have said it. Yeah, when we bounce, I just didn't want to set it down. I yeah, no, that's good. Up. Yeah, I like that. But, yeah. That was, that was smarter. Yeah, let's go ahead and pick up and get off the runway. No, that was really smart. Like, if you're going to bounce like that, it's better to just go around, right? Let's do left traffic this time. Thermal traffic up to 230 for whiskey on the go for on runway 13 for left close traffic. Or forward at 45 yeah. below 10 feet AGL. Cool, yeah, no, that was, that was good. Um, obviously, like a little bit of prompting to remind you stuff, but I think once you get it back, like a little bit of chair flying at home for all these maneuvers, since I'm going to start throwing like everything at you, you'll get it back real quick. But the what, what are we doing, why are we doing it, and how do we make it successful with the higher, low, faster, slow, makes it so much easier to stay on top of the helicopter. And do what needs to be done before you're like a little bit behind. Oh. All right, we know it should be shallow, so get a, decent, get a big seat descent in early, because you can always raise collective again. We know we just need to exchange detail for in-ground effects. We don't need to be going faster than 60 knots. Shouldn't be going faster than 60 knots anyway. At the very, very end, we know that that little bit of half cyclic, once we lose ETL, our induced flow goes up quite a bit. We get in ground effect, so we shouldn't descend much, right, as long as we have a perfect exchange of losing ETL and getting in ground effect. But our induced flow is going to go up a little bit, so we might have to raise a little bit of clock. Yeah. And to make it that nice, smooth, good run on where you don't bounce at all, you need to skim the helicopter onto the ground. That's why we want that nice, shallow, very shallow approach angle. Mm. If you're coming in at all steep, by the time you lose ETL, you're kind of just going to sink through really fast, and you're going to hit the ground, skids are going to kind of yield a little bit, and then spring back in, and you're going to have that little bounce. Okay. So yeah. that's why we want that nice, smooth, kind of like skimming it on, like, if these were actually skis and we were trying to skim this thing uh -huh. on the water. But with uh, more forward cycling. Yeah. Yeah, two people never really level enough, so it's kind of like forward and then forward again. But yeah. you just want it very smooth, uh, because if you do it too fast, you might pick back up airspeed or uh, split your lift factor too quickly. You just focus on this, I'll get the call. Yeah. Tell them the traffic up to 2304 Whiskey, turning base, uh, left base for runway 13. Tell them. So another running landing? Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, a little bit different of a 
Good setup. About 20 feet 40 knots is kind of what I try to hit first and then I go from there. Yeah, so this is pretty, pretty damn nice. And then are we going to get to the spot with this combination? We're not going to get to the spot, we're just below the angle we want to hit so we have a hold to touch the airspeed until we get there. I try not to do too much with the collective though. Get the car beat. Yeah, we're sinking through a little fast, good. You can, get, you can start raising a little bit earlier. It shouldn't be like forward raise. You can start bringing a little bit of power even before you start giving that forward cycle. Okay. You kind of get forward then raise. Yeah. But if you're slowly bringing it in, it'll be a little bit better of a transition. Yeah, I felt a little bit high, so I gave forward cycling. Which splits your lift vector, then uh, you sink yeah. fast, which uh. makes you have to do a faster raise. Right. But if okay. you're ahead of the aircraft, you feel high, you know you're going to have to get forward eventually. Start slowly raising before right. you give that okay. forward. Yeah. So take the off? Yeah. Fuel? Uh, we could do an auto. You can do the auto if you want. And then we can get fuel uh, and then we can do a couple okay. more autos and then yeah, all the reports where, where are you going to, well, to let's, do the let's auto? get off the runway and talk about it. Um, we can just do one three. Okay. Because no one's coming here? Yeah. Nice going to different airports to go to the runways. Traffic up to 2-3, 0 for Whiskey, left downwind, 4, 
phase for runway one three. You can hold a little extra altitude too if you want. It's not. We don't have to be exactly 500 feet. No, no one else is here. Be more time to fill out the auto. So you have the oh. you have the setup, what you're doing. You have the entry, the glide, the flare, and the power recovery. So don't forget, man. When you get the you have the throttle, right? So yep. when you lower that collective, you gotta roll it off when it's yep. all the way down. And same thing for the roll on. We're just gonna crack it above 80 to build up in that flare. I'll be on quite a bit with you on this one. Oh, that's clear. Tomo traffic up 2304 Whiskey, turning base to the front, left base to final for runway 13. Tomo. And we'll go for that same spot. Okay. Entering auto in 3, 2, 1. Left hit right pedal. Just like roll off, little pitch pull. And then don't let it be above the green. Shoot this one a bit, that's fine. Go ahead and get it back into trim. That center line trim, that's what we need to be able to complete this auto. We got a little slow, we're gonna have to do a go around. A little bit less right pedal there, left pedal. Up the descent, start a climb. Um, so yeah, that whole like left pedal usage has got to happen like right off the bat. Like okay. we're going long left pedal, and then you got to get it back in trim. Because yeah. at your 200 foot check, you can't be doing a bunch of left pedal. Right? And you don't really know where your airspeed's exactly at. Because oh. it's kicking out of tram, you know, that you're going through the pitot tube. So let's not do any left pedal on this one. Let's okay. just take what we've got. We can always just air taxi direct to the fuel station. Traffic up to 2304 Whiskey going around, left traffic for run 3. Tell them. Listen 
feel. Airspeed's on the low end, so maybe a little bit lower and a little bit of forward. That's fine, we'll go ahead and keep this. Go ahead and start a little baby flare. Oh boy. Fucking seagull. Alright, you have trolls. I have trolls. You have trolls. That was like really good distraction for me. That increased my. <laughs> training. Didn't want to forget to roll on, right? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, yeah, let's go ahead and get some fuel. Did you want to try hover auto while we're low on fuel? Uh huh. I'll do the first one and then you do two and then we'll get fuel. And we can pick back up and do a couple more after we do a little. Yeah, I'm trolls. Left side's clear, right side's clear. I think the wind's coming from our right. But the wind sock was showing. Oh, calm. Pretty calm, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick out something easy to look at. So I'm gonna look at the A2 sign, Alpha 2 sign. And we've got a nice stable hover, that's what we want first. Really focused on the Alpha 2 sign, specifically that part of it. And I'm comparing the difference between Alpha 2 and the center of the compass. To the compass. That's that's what I'm looking at. That way I can see if I get yaw left or right, right? No. So as I roll off, nice smooth roll off, I'm going to, at the same time, apply right pedal. And I continuously apply right pedal as I continue to roll off. Then the helicopter's going to settle and I raise collective the cushion. Alright, take a nice deep breath. And I cover auto in 3, 2, 1. I'll take it. Wasn't perfect, but pretty nice heading control. You got a little bit to the left, so I think I was just a little bit late on my initial right pedal, but I stopped it, and I drifted a little bit to the left, right, and a tiny bit forward, which forward movement's fine, don't really want any drift, that was a minimal left drift, so I'm okay with it, but that was just because pilots in R-22 have all this left cyclic to compensate for transdying dependency, but as we roll off the throttle, we don't have that anymore, so I need a little bit of right cyclic. Alright, you have patrols? I have patrols. You have patrols. My initial raise was like slightly too much, I stopped raising, let the helicopter get a little bit lower, and then I just ripped up on it. Nice, dude. Okay, how about order in three, two, one. was really good, the heading was within standard. I'd, yeah, much rather you have too slow of a roll off than way too fast one. Because I think that was still about the same time that engine failure would happen, you know? It takes about a second, no. second and a half. Let's do it from like right here. 
got to be a little bit more accurate with our cushion. Yeah, whenever you're ready. I'm all in. Three, two, one. More and more and more right pedal. Right? Yeah, I, I, in the end I already had full right uh -huh. pedal. But it was too late. So you stopped okay. it from yawing more, yeah. but it was too late for standard. Faster right yeah. pedal. Yeah, okay. Go ahead and increase the throttle. You can do one more if you want. Yeah. So yeah, the initial right pedal is just to catch it, catch that initial uh, change in torque. But as you continuously roll off, you continuously need more and more, more right pedal. Yeah. So really focus on the difference between alpha and the center of the yeah. windscreen, right? You're really dead, dead eyed on it. That way, when you get that one degree change in yaw, you can really start to take action before it develops into five degrees or more. Because now it's five degree yaw for commercial standard for a Verado, which is pretty freaking insane. Good. Got these pickups down again. <laughs> It's just a really fast set down, is how I think of this. You can do a little bit faster on that roll off too. Okay. But dead eye focus man on Alpha 2, or whatever you're looking at, and the yeah. difference between that and the center yeah. of the windscreen. That's alpha auto in. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh! Oh! That's <laughs> um, already lower. Yeah, we were a little bit still high up, but that was fine, man. No, that was good. Okay. I was okay with that. Wow. Not getting any aft drift, very, very minimal left and right. Moved forward to touch, which is totally fine. Go ahead and increase those RPMs. Pedals neutral. Good. Uh, that was a high hover auto initiation. Okay. We were definitely at like three feet, which makes it a lot harder to cushion. You have wow. to let it come pretty far down. All right, yeah, let's pick up and get some fuel. Oh, boy. <laughs> For whiskey with you on one two two four five. Sorry. Oh. Magnum Radio Radiocopter two three zero four whiskey with you on one two two four five. Runway, please. Twelve 
Okay, we can still fly six minutes with all us. Nice. Because I. Uh, Actually, let's go fly to the coast. See the beach since we're already over here. Yeah. Tell them the traffic copy 2304 Whiskey uh, will actually be departing westbound towards the ocean. Uh, runway 13. Tell them. Off the gun. Oh boy. at 600 feet, right crosswind 13, we'll depart right crosswind westbound, climbing to 2000. Hold on. I put my seatbelt on. Oh, you already had that on. Oh, you, un you unfastened it, didn't you? Oh yeah, right. Oh yeah, of course. Go get my phone. You can fly too, I'm not gonna try to take <laughs> too much from you. Nice okay. to fly every once in a while, but... Hurts my arm, because I never fly. <laughs> Alright, you have all controls? I have controls. You got them. Um... Uh, let's... Buy it. Uh... Let's tell them we're doing a last call real quick. Or just say we're two west. Thermal so traffic up to 2304 Whiskey 2 to the west at 1200, heading west, climbing to 2000. Thermal traffic. Last call. Uh. Make member radio up to 2304 Whiskey with you on 12245. I'm on 122.3 And then I'll get them on uh, Bluetooth on my phone and Keep climbing as best we can at 2000, you should be able to get them My member radio copter 230 for whiskey with you on 122.3 
Yeah, hi, this is Copter 2304 Whiskey. We'd like to close our flight plan from Hillsborough to Tillamook. Uh, 2304 Whiskey. Cool, thank you so much. Alright, bye. Did he say anything? Nope. Perfect. He knew my name. <laughs> he said thank you, Mr. Manning. So <laughs> I guess I keep my phone number on file. Uh, no, I entered your name. Yeah, but how did he know it wasn't you? That was Colin. I didn't tell him my name. Uh, I think you were uh, contact person and pilot. So. Oh, you're going to get me in trouble then. <laughs> Left side's clear. Yeah, you can have me as uh, contact. You probably want to put yourself as pilot. Yeah, uh, yeah I think I put your name pilot. Because before that I had Nate. Then I for IFR, because mm. I think for an IFR plan I can put my name in it. Ah, yeah. So I just change it to yours without saying it. Good point. Okay, we can go back to Selma. <laughs> to a couple of those. Oh, we're going to start heading back. Uh, 12.15. I didn't file a new plan there. No. But. So you can't file on here if you're already in the flight? Yeah, because I. Because uh, you don't have cellular? Yeah. I could share uh, Wi Fi with my, with my phone, but uh, not when I'm pilot. And I guess when I open it, when that's, somebody else is That's a good idea, actually. Me. Well, you could still do a hotspot. Yeah, that's what I mean. While you're flying, right? Can't you? Yeah, but uh, my phone wouldn't survive if I just let it open all the time. Oh. You can't have it like the screen, the black screen, and still have it doing a hotspot? I've never, done, hot, I've never done hotspot. Hot, hotspot is taking a lot of the uh, energy. Oh, really? Yeah. And my phone, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty old. And you, when you get a new phone, man, go iPhone. That way you can get. Yeah. It. Then you have cellular on your iPhone, and right. you can get uh, four flight on that, and then you can open and close it on four flight. Plus, it's so nice having this as backup. Like my iPad died on me so many times. Like, actually, there's a couple of CFIs that just use their phone instead of an yeah. iPad. I think Ichiro Tsushima does that too. Yeah. But he's doing everything on his phone. <laughs> he's texting and looking up gifts. No, uh, his, uh, uh, he has a checklist on it and just checking it. Oh, yeah. Okay, you did this. In, in the ground as well, he was only asking, okay, what about this? I don't want to hear about that, what you're talking about. Stop it. I asked you about something else. And, okay, that's enough. Next question. <laughs> I want to start. Uh, <laughs> With the with this checklist we have, paid model. The paid model. Yeah. And it was like, no, 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 no. What are you talking about? <laughs> I asked you something. Hey. Yeah, he's an interesting guy. Yeah. I was preparing for a very throughout uh, check ride with Rainer Gates, and then he's just signing me off. Yeah, he's pretty easy. I had him for uh, my instrument and my CF double I. Nice to get an easy one, but then you're like, oh, do I? Yeah. Am I really ready? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're not really, re really confident that he is telling you, yeah, okay, you can go. That's the thing with instrument, though. You don't feel really confident in it until probably a few years of teaching it. Yeah. I don't feel confident in it. <laughs> I mean, like, if I was, like, actual IMC, you know? Yeah. That would be pretty nerve-wracking, I think. I mean, we just, we're in this, like, we have such an easy out, we just take off our glasses or our hood, you yeah, know? Because right. <laughs> we're flying VFR. So it's not really, like, that, like, crazy for us. But I bet it changes when you fly another helicopter. Yeah. It feels just totally different. I, I don't know, I, I would guess that. Uh -huh. 
Uh, you want to go for the numbers? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were, we were nice and close to the ground. You stopped the D 
descent, we could have slowed down our airspeed even more if we wanted to. Uh, no. But no, that was fine. Okay. I mean, having the RPMs in the green, you're still going to have a fine pull no. down. Uh, basically, we're always trying to hit that point where we have the same exact auto every single time. It's just going through the 200 foot check, we can see if we have more or less energy going into our flare. If we have 80 knots going into the 200 foot check, we'll probably want to flare a little bit higher. That way we get that 65 knots uh, coming in through our 40 feet where we normally start flying. If we had 50 knots, where you need to do a go around both these anyways, if we had 50 knots going into uh, the 200 foot check and you decided to go, then you would want to do a normal flare at 40 feet. You'd want to flare a lot lower and quite a bit harder. Yeah. Right? Because you don't have as much kinetic energy to pop that descent. But either way, you're always trying to hit that same kind of trajectory and path for that 65 knots at 40 feet. If you have less than that, then it's like, well, if we didn't have, to, if we had 50 knots at 40 feet, then it's basically like we need to flare lower so that because we usually have 50, 50 knots at 30 feet, right? So then we need to do our flare at 30 feet because we usually have 50 knots there. Uh huh. Right? Yeah. Or if you had 70 knots, you wouldn't want to flare at, or 75 knots, you wouldn't want to flare at 40 feet with that, because we usually have 65 knots at 40 feet. So you'd want to flare a little bit higher, that way you can bleed off a little bit of energy, right. and you have 65 knots at 40 feet. That's kind of how I think of it. Yeah. Obviously, you can always change that up, like if you wanted to send your glide a little bit, or if you wanted a really high energy flare, then you'd want more airspeed in your flare. But I think that's the easiest way to think about it. It adds yeah. a little bit more to, to the 200 foot check than just go or no go. It's like, well, how is how is this aircraft going to react to my flare with the energy I have? But yeah, the whole purpose of that flare is to level off your descent rate and airspeed. If you've done that, or level off your descent, slow down your airspeed. And if you've done that, you've achieved the purpose of the flare. You just want to try to do that no higher than like, you want to like level out no higher than like 10 feet, you know. If you're falling, if you can imagine falling from 15 feet, those skids are going to bounce. You're going to yeah. bounce pretty bad. Yeah, we want to try to level out closer to like, get that level out coming in around 8 feet. That way by the time you're fully leveled, you're at like 5 feet over the ground. Okay. Which is, yeah. be fine. I love doing autos here though, because we have the whole freaking place. Yeah. We can actually hit the we spot. We can do you whatever know? we want. Yeah. We can do that uh, more often. Yeah, I think this one's great because we get so many off airports in on the way yeah. there and on the way back. But uh, Kelso would be good too. Not so much for off airports, but we could do stuff on the way up to Kelso. Stop at Scapoose. Kelso and then maybe hit PDX up on the way back. Just yeah. Last Charlie training. We do a couple night cross countries. But I kind of was hoping to do those right before we send you solo, just to build time at night, because both of us need that, and yeah. then um, gives you the retraining. Why, you why didn't we do that? There was something. We, okay. we tried to send you for like a week. Maybe a week and a half. Yeah, I, I guess yeah. We, we were working pretty long, but... Wind kept going like to 15 knots, right? right? Yeah. Oh. And we something. were both getting kind of pissed off about it, so <laughs> <laughs> we, just, we were like, screw it, let's just do instrument training so we can get it done before winter. Yeah. And yeah, you did, right. you, got it, you yeah. barely got it done before <laughs> Yeah. <coughs> if we decided to go instrument three days earlier, it would have saved me a month, I guess. <laughs> Probably. But you never know. Never know. Thermal traffic, copter 2304 Whiskey, forward to the northeast at 2,000 feet, climbing to 3,000, heading east. Thermal traffic. Thank 
Crowley is still coming from the east. Oh, okay. this way a bit. Yeah. That's another tip too, I think I've told you that one before, but pick out a straight and level spot to fly to, like the top of that peak. Get it pointed to that for a second. Now just kind of relax your cyclic. Let the wind push us where it's going to push. Go to the left. The wind's probably coming. Yeah, left and backwards. <laughs> so yeah, maybe it's over here. Yeah, that looks dark. Opportunity 
this. <laughs> That was weird, we couldn't get a hold of them at all, 2,000 feet. Good to know though, big dead spot out there. I could have texted somebody at school too. Hey, okay. can you cancel for yeah. me? Yeah. <laughs> 2,040. Thank you, Mr. Manning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> I felt like the, there just wasn't no one. And when I called them, they just kept ringing. Yeah, it said, okay, uh, you're next in line. Uh, nothing happened. But it kept ringing, right? Yeah. Oh, I've, I've, been on, I've been on hold for like 15 minutes before. Wow. Usually it's like a minute. Why are you the first in line? Um, yeah, I mean, like, how long does it take to, like, open or close a flight plan, you know? Like, one guy might do two flight plans, that might be five minutes with the standard briefing. Yeah. That's only if there's one person on duty. Like, there should be a whole bunch, you know, so. getting the sore throat at night and in the morning and then it starts to go away during the day. So I'm like, sweet, I'm good. And then it just keeps coming back at night and in the morning. You ever get that? Oh, uh, no. And it's just cold in my house, so I can't, the cold air is just screwing up my throat. It's feeling better now, so I'm good. Is it just in the winter time? Huh? Is it just in the winter time? Yeah, it seems like it. Are you heating at home? Heating? Yeah. Yeah, but, I don't know, we have such a big house, we just have it at 72, which should be plenty hot. But, I think it's just because it's such a big house, it's not actually 72, <laughs> it's probably like uh, 60. Uh, that probably is a combination from cold air and dry air. Oh uh, yeah, cold dry air, yeah. And think about the dry air. Yeah, close spots as well. <laughs> like somewhere else. is the heading that we should be flying, but yeah. the wind is pushing us a little bit, right? Yeah. So what I would do is I would turn 055. Or to check out this uh, Check out something on the hill. Yeah, okay, that works. And let's go like 80 knots. Especially since we have this headwind here slowing us down. <laughs> I just thought we had 25 knots ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, wow. I looked at that for a second too. I've uh, I flew through the gorge and flew down to Primeville when I was a commercial stage two suit. Stayed there for a few nights. It was pretty cool. Uh, brought the helicopter down there and did off airports in Bend, Oregon. Uh, but flying through the gorge, I was going 90 knots indicated, and we had 45 knots ground speed. Wow, <laughs> 45 knots. We're just crawling. So there's like semi trucks on the highway. <laughs> I've had a tailwind now, I was going 80 and I had 125 indicated, or uh, ground speed. That's nice. How high were you? Uh, I think I was at just 2,500, I think. Okay. Actually, I might have been even lower. I was coming back into the airport, so it was probably descending through like 1,500. There's a lot of wind that day. I think it, it looked always pretty crazy. It was instrument I, too. Yeah, when, when I was uh, flying instrument, and always approaching, I think it was always Astoria from the south, and we were almost at our missed approach point. And we were going, I uh, eight knots or something, and just 500 feet. Or no, it was three. Eight? Eight? Three, 300 feet. Did you say eight? Yeah, 80. Oh, 80. 
380 and then just 300 feet AGL that's crazy <laughs> that's pretty crazy yeah here it is gone this one looks good that one looks good all turbulent yeah I, I, I said it looks good <laughs> yeah they're good That is a pretty cool spot right down there, yeah. but well, I think a little too turbulent right there. Yeah. Get over these ridges, because the wind's coming from that way, so then far enough away from those, which should get too much. Twelve forty, so yeah, we probably have enough time for one out here and then we can evaluate when we get a little bit closer. Thirty thirty thirteen thirty is when we have to land, right? Yep. Uh, well, we should be back at like thirteen oh. fifteen. My clock is now time. Oh. Wrong time. Or I bet. Yeah, I bet. Okay. But we had more time. A lot of spots over there. Oh. Choose something a little bit cooler. See those three trees on the top of the hill? The next one, the green hill. Uh, on top of it? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Let's do a high recon to see if it's possible to land that one. Okay. Looks like small trees, maybe there's an area with bushes. Trees, right? Not bushes on the right side. Yeah, look at trees. Bushes. Yeah, then they are too big. Over there. Full yeah. red with the full end spot. Ah. So, how are you going to come in? That should go through your head right now. Because you could have already been going really slow and then just shot your approach. I don't know where the wind's coming from, so... Yeah, you do. I don't know. From the north. So we have to do an uh, old loop anyways. Again. What's our ground speed versus indicated? Yeah, 85. Oh, that's ground speed. Okay. Someone from behind us. Yeah, and it's been coming from that way the whole time, right? 15. And this works too. This, you're going to have it all done in one circle. But yeah. if you were thinking about it a little earlier, you can already know where the wind's coming from the whole time. You can already have your power setting done. 6,500 maybe. Five twenty twenty three eight minus one twenty two eight. Sixty five. Okay, stars. So, okay, we have to do one more orb. Definitely looks good, uh, big enough. No power lines, no people. No property. Oh. No other obstacles. Plenty of force landing areas. Uh, entry from the north. Yes, 
here. I'm not sure about the exit to the south. Are you to the south on the land, or we could, yeah, just say that. Some, some, somewhere else, I guess. But plan your approach out so we don't have to do a whole nother circle. Oh. Ah, uh, we, we, we should be able to go to the south. Uh, six, six, oh five, Papa is entering a uh, lift downwind for only one five. The end of that is. Yeah, turbulence. That's it. Now, do you think we're high right now? No. Yeah, so don't turn in too much or keep slowing down. And all that app cyclic is leveling out your descent. Yeah. So you still have plenty of airspeed to be able to descend safely. So, lower collective. Still plenty of airspeed, so we can slow down a little bit more. Turning final, I think a little bit too early. Now, if you had been lower and slower before turning there, you would have been fine. But we we're still going too fast. And now you gotta be really careful about all that aft, because we still have a descent rate that's not safe. So you're just kind of making it harder than it needs to be. Oh, no, it looks good. Yeah, it looks good now, but you're getting it like on okay. the edge of not yeah. being okay. Yeah. Yeah. Before we turn final. Yeah. Okay. 
what you're trying to do is you're trying to hold 30 knots or more when your descent rate's high. What I'm trying to get you to do is slow down earlier and get your descent rate under control earlier. Yeah. Because if we have a nice slow rate of closure, we're going to have all the time in the world to lose altitude. So a 200 foot minute descent is actually going to, going slow, like at 20 knots, is going to give us more time to lose that altitude yeah. than a 500 foot minute descent at 30 knots or 40 knots. Considering the distance we... Depending we on the distance, yeah. yeah. But it's easier to yeah. manipulate the helicopter. Yeah. Plus, you already got it nice and safe. We don't need to try to stay on the edge. Oh. Just if you're high, don't be high and fast. So what I mean by that is you're already high. Slow the heck down. Right? Don't be fast. Though. Yeah, okay. Oh. Corps, go around. Just do a mock approach, get some information out of it. Right. Yeah. Go back around be like, okay, I was way too high last time. Let's get lower. And, uh, you know, on the off-air ports, it should look like you're pretty much damn level with the spot, right? We're getting close to it. You're still just lining up. For me, it's just lining up the top of the trim strings to the spot. Maybe even a little bit above the top of the trim strings, because I can always just level off, re-intercept my angle, and then come down. You want me to do a last call to tell him what? Uh, I don't think it'll reach him. Yeah. Just, uh, when I make your number three call, just... Seven five. Oh wow, that looks really nice down there. Can you see that? I have controls. You have controls. controls. Oh, that yeah, little leg. It's got like a little. Uh, it looks pretty deep. That does look deep. That looks awesome. All right, you, you have controls. I have controls. controls. Little dock off of it. Looks like there's two waterfalls, like little tiny ones. Dang. Man, that looks like a good swimming hole. Three. Secret spot. Oh, it's right next to our waterfall too. Yeah, I might have to try to find that. Bummer. Land a helicopter out here and then walk down. Yeah. <laughs> Go for a swim. Drop some, so someone out of the helicopter. Right, right, right. Delta, Peak, 4,800, climbing 5,000, left turn back westbound. Left right turn. West first air traffic after 2304, whiskey 3 to the west of Henry Hack Lake at 1800, heading east. West first air traffic. Wildfires or was there a big storm? Where? Oh, with with all those uh, missing trees. Oh, like all the new ones? Yeah. Uh, probably logging. Oh, okay. When they log, they have to plant new trees. Yeah, alright. In Switzerland, there are a few mountains. They just lost all the trees due to the storm. Ugh. That happens in Bend. Bend, like. You can tell though, because everything's just black. All the undergrowth, they're all the, you know, the top growth, all the moss and stuff. And then the trees are just, they're still there, but they're just like purple. Yeah. Does uh, advanced mountain training consist of? I never did it. Oh, I thought that's uh, part of commercial. Uh, it is if you take the course, but you need to fly the 44 for that because uh. usually, like, I guess, fly closer to some bigger mountains. And stuff. Okay. I think it's you know some like traversing where you get pretty close to the trees, but we can do that using like the uh, windward side mountain to uh -huh. help push you up the hill you know, and stay nice and close to it uh -huh. so you get the biggest benefit from it. Yeah. Now you're like 10 feet above the treetops. <laughs> you can push up. We'll do some of that. I almost did it today actually, but that's the perfect setup for it. Let's practice area. 7015 Mike Golf over Yan.
Yeah? Okay, didn't do them. Ah, so what, it would have been good if you saw them. <laughs> What circuit breaker did I pull? Um. Oh. Huh. No. Uh, uh, um. Why would that zero? Help? Delta, better not to know uh, one thousand two hundred. Your number one runway through one third one. Uh, not, not sure. It's on the same board as the uh, warning light, right? Yep. Those lights ain't working. Yeah. And a zero out. Okay. Or if the circuit breaker popped. <laughs> Alright. I'm not sure which one. We're not sure which one. So for all we know, every single one of them could be on. Okay. I'd say that's a land immediately. Did you get all the calls? <laughs> oh, yeah. Down what the wind was? Uh, they said 250. Yeah, once I pass that road, I, I usually call too. Okay. This will show up to 230 for whiskey over Espanol. Up to 04, whiskey, proceed to the cone wind 2504. Proceed to the cone, up to 230 for whiskey. Special aircraft information, Quebec current altimeter 3002, wind 2504. but you can try to hit right towards that field next time and you don't okay. fly over these guys right beneath us. A little bit nicer. That's really nitpicky, but... No. When you hear how many noise complaints we get, like, every day, <laughs> when you're CFI, you'll start to... that'll be more in your head. Okay. that I can go around. Oh. I just want to... Tower, 
Seven Lima at three one let Alpha A ready for departure. The flags don't even look like they're really given. So five three five one Lima Hills for tower runway three one left at Alpha Eight clear for takeoff. Yeah, so this is a really good example. We're high, right? Slow down. Archer eight two Delta ground point seven. Now we have plenty of time to lower the collective a little bit too, though. We gotta get up above a descent. But if you just hold this, we have so much time to descent, and you could descend like normal, like you could do a huge descent here. Four four one Mike Romeo Hills for a tower report two miles south of the field. Four two miles south of the field. Time we have. Helicopter one Mike Romeo verify information Quebec. We have Quebec. Four four one Mike Romeo. And we can always raise collective again whenever we want. As you're coming in through 40 knots, you already have your descent rate safe. I know. But we already got it nice and safe before we even hit 30. Look at this. Beautiful. Now we do have a little bit of a left cross so we'll be mindful of that, especially as we start losing ETL. Raising up that collective, get that left pedal in. Just enough to keep it feeling stable. It's just four knots. Now slip it back. Very slowly and smoothly, especially right here as we raise the collective point. Good. Yeah, I almost didn't need to put in right pedal. I just hold left pedal. Yeah, and raise. Yeah, I guess when I say that, it's more just bring the nose back to the right. However, you're gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> just do it slowly. Because yeah. we're already gonna increase torque. Usually, when I do right pedal inputs, it's just enough to get momentum going to the right. But I control how fast it goes with left. Yeah. Yeah. 
helicopter one micro, you want the runway or uh, the cone?